What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is April 5th of 2018. Well folks, it's time for a daily update here on the Datadash channel. And today we have a lot of important as well as exciting things to cover on the daily update. First and foremost, as always though, we'll be spending some time looking at market valuations as well as doing some technical analysis on the market leaders. And along with that, I'll be sharing with you guys an update in regards to both my Tron trade as well as a new trade I made in the market. So what are the other things we're gonna be diving into? Well, first I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a piece of art that I made that I'm quite proud of. I spent a few hours making it. I hope you guys will enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. Along with that as well, there's a really interesting tool I found on Reddit that I thought I might as well share with you guys, as well as a cool photo of the up-to-date Lightning Network. And last but not least, we have two headlines in regards to the rumors of CoinCheck and the supposed acquisition of Monex. We'll talk about that later on in the video, as well as South Korean officials in regards to uh, South Korean exchanges in crypto going through uh, supposed allegations of embezzlement. So we've got lots of different things to talk about, guys. Let's go ahead and dive into the, uh, the daily update and get started with it. So First and foremost here, we can see the general tone of the market is generally red. We have some players who are strong and the green here, but we also have the majority of players in the market slightly down for the past 24 hours. Tron performing best out of all players in the market. I will tell you guys how I did on the trade there in regards to uh, Tron in just a few minutes, but along with that as well, global market capitalization still holding above 250 billion. And in fact, over the past, really the past few hours, we got a pretty strong rebound off there. However, we're still holding on 250 billion dollars we take it down here to the seven day we can start to see that rebound really kicked in over the past few minutes here and is heading up towards a much higher level up towards the highs over here for the past few days so Really good to see that it's getting back up to this level. Along with that as well, we can come down here to market dominance, take a look here at Bitcoin and see that Bitcoin is again continuing to flatten out around 45% while other coins continue to chug along and make new highs. So really good stuff here. Again, we're still seeing a depletion of other market leaders here. Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum continuing to lose dominance as well as Ripple and other market leaders out there in the space. So Again, I think this is going to be the continued trend, guys. It's it's not a surprise here. This is generally what's happening. So let's go ahead and take a look here at some uh, some of the players in the market. Bitcoin. Again, I can't do too much TA on this, guys, because we're really not seeing much of a trend here. Now, what I can say is that we weren't able to hold on the 200-hour here. Price broke below it, and because of that, we're still kind of in this neutral zone going sideways. We're going to have to wait to see if the 200-hour or the 50-hour are going to serve as resistance or an opportunity to break past the two different indicators and find support again. As of now though, the 200 day, or sorry, excuse me, 200 hour is serving as resistance here, but we haven't seen any serious sell side action. We're still holding well above $6,600, which is where we found support four times over the past uh, areas of price action here in regards to the hourly. So we're gonna wait, we're gonna see what happens here, but we're starting to see some really interesting action in the altcoin market. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few other market leaders here. First and foremost, uh, Ethereum, oops, for sometimes it doesn't if sometimes it uh even though i have it selected it won't do it but i think i just messed up there okay so here with ethereum i gotta be fair here as much as i i think we still might have some downside with this guys again i, I was gonna wait until uh five million satoshis this is holding out here we're not making new lows it seems like we've got a double bottom on ethereum here and if we take it to the usd marking here it might be that ethereum is finding support at this previous resistance here around 400 dollars you know we're a little bit below it right now but again with uh, previous support and resistance you're not always going to have it aligned perfectly guys there's different variables and markets that'll make it so it's a little bit inconsistent but generally we can see that it's holding quite well at this area here so if we continue to hold here and we see the USD valuation of Ethereum maybe get above four, uh, 420 or $430, starting to show that this could curve up and gain valuation, it might be that Ethereum is done. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. But again, I still think we've got some dominance to run out of these market leaders. So Ethereum might not be an exception to that. So going on here, taking a look at Ripple again, holding on that 200 day there i still think this is a little overextended again we've seen historically with ripple that this goes much lower guys not trying to play the bearish case just playing off historical price action but again with market dominance evaporating from bitcoin you might be able to see ripple hold uh, higher comparative to previous uh uh, pullbacks in uh, Ripple's price compared to Bitcoin. So we'll have to see. Taking a look at the USD valuation, again, I still think this is a little overextended, but if we take a look back, again, at previous price history, resistance was at 45 cents, and now it looks like we're getting very, very close to that previous level down there. As you can see, the green line for the current price lining up quite well with the previous resistance for Ripple in the past back in May. So 
who knows? Could be an opportunity for Ripple to hold. We'll have to wait and see. Going out here to take a look at some more market leaders, Bitcoin Cash, again, still doing what we were predicting, guys, breaking down below the support level there and continuing down lower. Again, waiting till this reaches 5 million Satoshis before I even touch it. Litecoin, uh, I, I saw some people thinking I was uh, negative on Litecoin again. You guys, you guys gotta understand, I read the comments, I read your tweets, I, I'm listening. Uh, the thing is though, in regards to Litecoin here, it's not that I'm bearish on Litecoin by any sense, and I do like that this actually caught some support here, uh, as we've seen in the past. But the whole thing about Litecoin is we're generally on the higher end here. And I want to find a tap down on the 200 day. And I think if we can hold it, there might be an opportunity for Litecoin to come back up and previous uh, test the previous highs, which usually serve as resistance, and maybe see higher levels. But again, it's a general trend that we're seeing the market leaders in the top 10 start to decrease in valuation, or at least market dominance, meaning that they're probably going to lose valuation while other altcoins continue to gain or hold so that's my general sense right here for Litecoin. nothing nothing bearish in the long term just in the short term uh going on here to a few other market leaders and we'll jump into some of the trades that i'm doing ada btc continuing to just generally kind of go sideways right now no serious trend i think it's waiting for the 50 day to come down possibly get a break out above it and find support but right now we're going sideways guys we're not losing we're not gaining it's just simply sideways price action so this might be an opportunity to add if you guys haven't gotten in. If you guys think Cardano is a good play, again, it's all up to you. Um, I've already added my position. So if this goes down to much lower levels, again, around 1,300 Satoshis, I'll add. But for now, I'm holding strong with the position I've got. And looking at a few more market leaders, let's take a look at Icon here. Again, Icon still holding quite well around 3,000 Satoshis. Again, where this was holding previously. Uh, and after the BitThumb news, we've seen volume decline a little bit. It's understandable. Still holding much better than where it was a few weeks ago. So again, just moving sideways here. Nothing too serious. And last but not least, we'll take a look, I guess, at uh, I think EOS. Uh, EOS is the other one I want to talk about. EOS continuing to break up to the upside, guys. So this is really interesting. Uh, as much as I don't like to buy this when it's already going through the process of rallying if the volume does keep up here i think we could very well see this go higher this did exactly what we were hoping to do uh hoping for eos to do either find support here around 80,000 satoshis or come down to the 50 day and find support either way it's repeating that same pattern looking healthy looking good and supposedly the news and fundamentals are looking really good for eos so Anyways, that's it for the kind of analysis on market leaders. I'm going to update you guys on my uh, two trade topics here. First and foremost, Tron completely uh, bounced up out of nowhere. I didn't think it would happen this quick, but I, I guess there was either some big volume buyers or some news that came in for Tron. Because of that, I got closed out of my, uh, my uh, order in regards to selling Tron. So I got locked out of the trade and made a really nice profit on this. I got in around uh, 4,800 Satoshis and I sold it at around, I think, 600 or 620, something around that range. So not at the exact top. It's nothing you can kill yourself over. Oh my God, I, I didn't get out of the trade at the right time. The thing is, uh, to kind of let you guys know as to why you should use stops and limits, is because uh, I would have uh, woken up this morning to owning my Tron down here at 550. Uh, so because of that, it was actually good that I, I got my my, uh, my limit set, sold to the market, and because of that, or excuse me, um, yeah, my stop limit and stuff, in regards to selling the trade here and uh, getting out of the trade. So it was very, very good that I got out at this uh, high level around 600, made a really good short-term trade on it, didn't expect it to go this fast, but luckily we had a good trade on this. So Got out of Tron successfully. What's my next trade here? I want to spend some time talking about it as I bring it here to the daily. We're going to be talking today about Lisk. So Lisk is uh, a cryptocurrency myself who I, I've I've not always had a bearish tone on, but I've generally said, look, this is a better one uh, to trade. Now, it's not that I'm negative on it fundamentally long term. It's just that this project is not only going to take uh, a little bit longer, much like a lot of the other serious platforms out there, but it's something that is provided as a wonderful trading opportunity multiple times in the past. So I'll go ahead and explain that. First and foremost, I want to talk about why I think Lisk is uh, at, a, at a bullish opportunity here. Not only are we below the 200 day moving average, which has historically been a really good opportunity to get into Lisk in the short term, but along with that as well, Lisk has been going through what's known as an expanding channel here. And we've seen this in a few different cryptocurrencies, but I want to really relate it to a stock that I've traded in the past using, again, some of my previous market knowledge. Uh, when I had traded in stock markets, there was a really, really, uh, in, a really enticing stock that I traded called Halozyme Therapeutics. It's a pharmaceutical company. And of course, obviously, as we look at the daily here, it's a little bit uh, more stretched out over time. 
But if we take a look here, every time that this would get below the 200 day and find support along this supporting channel, and I'll take it to the weekly so you can get a better picture of it. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit stretched out in regards to price. Remember, a week in crypto is like a month in the stock market or a year in the stock market. So because of that, uh, we have to take it here to the weekly, but we can see a very common trend here, rising support and rising resistance. So this is a very bullish pattern because it shows that over time, the price is continuing to make higher lows, meaning that it's, you know, again, solidifying uh, price strength confirmation at higher levels. But along with that, we're getting a higher range of uh, potential reward for investing at these lows as it goes higher and higher. And sometimes you'll get a break out of the channel again, Sometimes guys, there's anomalies, but for the most part, you can see there's a general resistance point and there's a general support line. And every time this went below the 200 week or the 200 day, this was an opportunity to add. And we can take a look again at list guys and see the similarities as we take it here to the daily. Again, very, very similar price action here, a rising support line and rising resistance. So I made an ad around, uh, I think it's 116,000 Satoshis. Generally bought it here today after it got the pullback. And again, you can start to see these big uh, price swing candles, but just wait until we get some of the institutional volume in here, guys. I think it's going to play out very well. Again, you've got to assess it for yourself, not giving a trade recommendation here, guys. See if you see the same thing I do, but again, I buy on the lows, I buy when I find support historically, and I hopefully look for a higher swing to the upside, which is why ascending, uh, expanding channels are really, really exciting stuff. So that's generally what I'm looking for here in the market, guys. Made a trade on list here, pretty decent sized trade, nothing too massive though. Let's go ahead and, and focus on some things outside of technical analysis, guys. First and foremost, I wanna share with you guys a piece of work that I'm very proud of. I spent five hours making it, but it was five hours well spent. It is a Photoshop work I call it the financial revolution. So I'll, uh, you can probably generally tell it's a, it's a play on the old painting of 1776. Uh, but here you can see, uh, I, I kind of molded it into kind of the revolution of finance. So as you can see here, we've generally got two sides. We've got the crypto revolution against uh, crypto and blockchain revolution against the traditional bankers and financial institutions. So you can see here on the left, we've got some astute players. We've got Satoshi Nakamoto playing Mr. Thomas Jefferson, but you've also got Charlie Lee. I tried to Photoshop his head as best as I could with all that Ben Franklin hair. Uh, but along with that as well, we've got Vitalik, Nick Zabo, as well as Andres Antonopoulos going up against the big dogs, the Rothschilds, Jamie Dimon, the biggest doubter of Bitcoin. Paul Krugman, an advocator of Bitcoin, uh, Goldman Sachs CEO, as well as the chairman of the uh, Bank of England. And then also you go down here, you've got some of the Fed chairmen, you got uh, Janet Yellen, uh, Ben Bernanke, Warren Buffett, George Soros, uh, as well as the head of the IMF and uh, the leader of BlackRock and some other astute bankers on the right hand side. But we've also got our legion of supporters and the charge for cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Got your famous Cliff High, Vinny Lingham, uh, as well as Tone Vase. Uh, we got Blockchain Brad, Ivan on Tech, Box Mining, the Winklevoss twins. Uh, we've also got Carlos Matos in the back, McAfee, Crypto Bobby, Carter Thomas, from Coin Mastery, uh, Mike Novogratz, and just down the list, you see all kinds of people as well as Doug Polk and a few others. So I, I thought I did a pretty decent job of photoshopping it. Couldn't always get the colors to match. I know there's different lighting on all the photos I got, but I, I tried to make it look as uh, <laughs> look as plausible as possible. But this is just my kind of plan, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you could, uh, definitely go give it a like and retweet on Twitter. And if you haven't already, please follow me, guys. I do put some uh, interesting tweets out there. I've been trying to get more active on social media. I'm not the biggest fan of social media. But anyways, that's it for the painting. Let's go ahead and talk about some interesting tools. I found a really interesting tool on Reddit, and I want to give all credit to the inventor of it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name of VagaJC, not sure, but user on Reddit here who created a really interesting tool. Uh, it's, a, it's a secure website and everything where you have all these different trading view components and you can go hit F11 and go full screen on it and make sure to use control um, uh, uh, minus as well as plus to get the right viewpoint. But basically, it's a nice full screen view of where you can get a lot of different trading view charts. Now, you can see that there's a lot of range of cryptocurrencies here comparative to the dollar. But if you want to change any of these, if you're someone like myself who usually likes to use Bitcoin comparatives, or you just uh, want to look at stocks, for example, what you can do is uh, you can right click, actually just click on any of the uh, uh, charts here, and you can type in whatever you want. So for example, maybe I want to look at XRP BTC, and right there I can go ahead and click on it, and now I've got the chart there, and it's got the RSI as well as an indicator. So really interesting stuff cool little way to get a whole grasp on the market as well as have a little message box here and just simply hit F11 to get out. And of course you can uh, uh, minus or plus with control to get a different viewpoint as well. 
So all credit to him, really interesting little tool for those of you who like to have 20 charts in front of you or maybe have five different monitors circling, circulating around you so you can get every single view of the market. Next up as well, in regards to a positive tone here, I want to show you guys a recent photo, an update of over the elite value, the 1337 value of nodes on the network. We have over 1,300 nodes on the Lightning Network, and this is a visual representation of the explorer of the Lightning Network. So you can see that we've got a really expansive uh, community here of nodes and channels on the network supporting lightning payments. Now, again, here's where I, I, I kind of uh, kind of get interested here. First and foremost, I think all of the fears that were really drilled in about hubs in the cryptocurrency space, or at least with Lightning Network, is kind of washed away. There's there's too much competition here to where it's it's still too hard to regulate, guys. It's a really interesting overlayer protection. But at the same time, we do see some hubs forming here. We can start to see some of them uh, forming in the way, for example, Sleepy arc over here and over here as well. So you see lots of different uh, what are known as hubs in regards to being uh, kind of middle way uh, transactions between two parties on the Lightning Network. Really, however, though, there's enough infrastructure and enough competition to where if you want to route a Lightning Network a payment to someone individually, you can do that on this network or not have to go through one of these big centralized hubs. So it's really, really nice to see this working together and working more towards the positive nature and not filling into a lot of the fears people had over Lightning. So really exciting stuff here. Would love to support the network any way I can. Hopefully, uh, once there's more pl uh, places that take Lightning payments, I'm going to definitely be considering uh, setting up my own, uh, setting up my own node and opening up some payment channels and trying it out for myself. There's also a new application that just launched on Reddit, so you guys can check into that. It's one of the wallets that just launched. So going here towards the first headline, the Nikkei Asian Review confirming the rumors that have been spread this past week in regards to Coincheck meeting the terms of Monex's uh, requirements for the acquisition of the exchange. So this means that Monex is going to be taking over Coincheck, one of the largest Japanese exchanges and the infamous exchange that recently had the largest hack in cryptocurrency history, according to dollar value. So. We all know Coincheck was the exchange that got hacked for 530 million NEEM about a month or two ago. And this has been leading, uh, I think, the exchange into a very rough spot to where they could really use an exit point, someone who wants to come in and acquire the company. Now, there is some really positive news with this, and there's also some things we have to ask as questions as well in regards to the exchange uh, acquisition. So first and foremost, we can obviously tell uh, that this is a good exit point for a lot of the people who probably founded the exchange. They probably, even after this atrocity, selling their equity in the company has possibly given them a good position financially themselves. So congratu congratulations to that for founding a successful exchange and venturing into the space. But at the same time, there are going to be some terms in regards to this. So the first thing that really we need to note here in the second paragraph is that Coincheck is going to be shuffling its management. As we all know, the big hack led to a lot of questions in regards to leadership and the security behind it and um, how Coincheck in, in deals with securing the funds and the uh, accounts for users. And because of that, uh, they're going to be uh, switching up some leadership here. And they're going to have one of the leaders uh, from Monex, the chief operating officer, coming in, Toshihiko Katsuya, I probably mispronounced that somehow, taking over as president of the company. So this is one of the big steps. But along with that as well, they're not just setting in new leadership. They not only have to replace that position, but they're going to be taking out two of the leading people from the company. When they receive the new capital in regards to the acquisition, Coincheck is going to be removing its previous president, Koshiro Wada, as well as the chief operating officer, uh, Yusuke Atsuka. So they're both going to be stepping down. And if you guys don't know who those people are, those two individuals were the ones you've probably seen in all of the photos in regards to the Coincheck hack, where they, they probably don't look too happy with all the news that it hit overnight. So because of that, I think it's, uh, it's understandable that they want to exit out of this. They've probably gone through a lot of stress as is. But we have to ask whether or not this is going to be proper leadership for uh, Coincheck. Now, I think the guys who are stepping in, as well as the, and the entire company of Monex, if they're acquiring the exchange, they want to make the best of it. And in fact, they actually stated that they want cryptocurrencies to be a leading part of their new business model. So this is a good paragraph here that kind of summarizes their overall objective. They're trying to acquire a lot of different companies in the space and build a grounding uh, level in, in regards to Japan, because Japan itself has been a very positive uh, country in regards to cryptocurrencies. So it's important that they have a, a respected uh, exchange, like, or excuse me, a respected firm in regards to leading the exchange, uh, like, like Monex, for example, with all the new developments of the FSA. I think it's going to give them a good standing, but at the same time, we have to ask whether or not it's going to be good for leadership in the long term. 
at this point, I'll stay neutral on it. So last but not least, guys, some other important news, taking a little bit more to the bearish side, but it's something I think we all already knew. Uh, South Korean cryptocurrency executives have been recently detained. About I think it's about four individuals have been detained over the past few hours. This is still developing over alleged embezzlement charges. So this is not too surprising, guys. There's been a lot of rumors that there was things going on in the background. And there's an understanding as to why South Korean officials are kind of catching up to it. I think they've been a little bit late to the party, but a lot of people were worried about the embezzlement of billions of dollars due to the fact that many people were exporting money from China over into the anonymous accounts in South Korea through crypto exchanges like Bitthumb. And because of that, there's been supposed rumors that they're going through and questioning a lot of these leaders. Again, still not too much development right now. Develop right now. All we know is that there was four executives uh, from two of the major South Korean cryptocurrency exchanges detained on Thursday. So as we get more developments coming in, we'll talk about this as it continues to develop. But again, guys, I don't think it's too much of a surprise. People were abusing the system drastically, and they're saying it was to the level of billions of won, which is the South Korean currency. So. Really, I have no doubt about it, guys. We saw the kind of volume going through South Korean markets, and that still goes through South Korean markets. There's a lot of money that exported from China, which was the major market for crypto, into South Korea, as well as Japan as well. But anyways, that's it for the update, guys. Let me know what you think on any of these issues. What do you think about South Korea, the CoinCheck acquisition, some of the things we talked about in between, as well as the technical analysis we did in my recent trade on LISC. Any kind of topic you guys want to give a comment on, please leave it down in the comments down below. Get a discussion going, and I'd love to hear from you guys. Anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.